Good morning, everyone. For those that don't know me, I see there's, there are many new faces. My name is Ion, and um, I've said this already, but I'm not, a, I'm not a preacher. I'm actually a kindergarten teacher, so please bear with me. Um, but this morning, I have the privilege to share the message, and it's something that's been on my heart for a while now. But um, before we start, let's open in prayer. Father, we humbly come to your throne of mercy and we thank you for what you've given us in your Son. We ask that you will speak to us this morning and to our hearts that we will change and become more like your Son. Thank you for the wonderful example you've been and that you have given us your Spirit in order for us to follow you completely. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Alright, so before we move on, I'd like to share with you what I've, what I've realized over the past few years. Um, I'll show you what, what the message is about. Is this on? Alright. Alright, we're going to talk about humility. Um, as I said, it's been on my heart for a while now, and I'm sure we all need to learn more about being humble. But before we start, I'd like to share with you what I've learned over the past few years, and that is that our faith is, is um, from, the, from Israel, obviously they spoke Hebrew, so we've got a few words and phrases that we've that we've missed over the, over the years. And the reason why I, I um, share this with you is because it's got meaning. Uh, the names have meaning, and that, that just brings a depth to, your, uh, to our faith that, um, that we might not have if we didn't know that. So um, I want to share with you the break terms that might pop up in the sermon as um, I'm using the ISR translation, which is, uh, scripture research, or the scriptures. Um, Alright, so the first one, as you can see, is Yahweh or Jehovah. I'm not sure how, how to exactly pronounce that as all the vowels have been um, missing in the Hebraic language. So, it, it comes down to, it's the name of God. And um, next up is Yeshua. Um, we call him Jesus as well. Uh, the name Yeshua actually means God saves or Jehovah saves. So, <clears throat> what a wonderful name it is. Then Elohim means God. Hallelujah, that we sing so many times, so often. It means praise be to Jehovah. And then Israel, Israel, Torah, instruction, uh, more than law. Because instruction is for our own good, whereas law feels lim it's limiting us, but it's actually freeing us up to um, to live lives free of sin and um, because of what He's done for us. So, as I said, I, I use the translation, the Scriptures, or ISR, two thousand and nine. All right. Now, um, as I as I mentioned. We all battle with this topic, humility. Let's find out how we can deal with this. And I've, I've compiled a few uh, examples for us to learn from. So before we get into that, the definition of humility is freedom from pride or arrogance, or the quality or state of being humble. Now, freedom from pride. Why should we be free from pride? There's, there must be a good reason for that. I think it's because pride actually takes hold of us and puts us into a position where we are on our back foot, where we, we feel accused by whoever and whatever. Um, so, let's move on to... 
the view of society on humility because I think that plays a big part in the way we react and the way we think because we're in society we get affected by it whether we like it or not so let's have a look at how society views humility first of all society views humility as a weakness or as I wrote here meekness and humility is similar so whenever you're meek or humble most of the time you'll be viewed as as a as a weak person and that's that's definitely not what it is but unfortunately as it has become that or um, walk over you know you, you become a walkover where you just where you you become humble you accept people's opinions not always but I mean to be able to be humble I think especially in in Korea where the hierarchy is is so um, prevalent that that you can't really escape that you have to be you have to be humble but then because you're because of your age or your social status um, in society pride is seen as strength and self-confidence is highly sought after your family name is your identity in most cases um, which is also it's it can't be it can't be right so because of that we have become proud to protect ourselves we have become arrogant maybe in some cases just to to feel that we have some worth um, now let's have a look at the truth and the truth is found in scripture so what does scripture say about humility in proverbs 29 verse 23 i'll give you some uh, some time to to find in your in your scriptures if you if you'd like to follow um proverbs 29 23 the pride of man brings him low but the humble in spirit obtains esteem so as we can see in this verse it's totally the opposite of what society wants to teach us um, then we turn to proverbs 11 verse 2 which says pride comes then comes shame but with the humble is wisdom um, another example Philippians 2 verse 3 doing none at all through selfish or self-conceit but in humility consider others better than yourselves so we are called to humility <coughs> and considering others higher than ourselves even though their social status might be lower I think um, it's a really hard thing to do but we are we are called to that as believers then in in 1 Peter 5 verse 6 humble yourselves then under the mighty hand of Elohim so that he exalts you in due time and it's wonderful to know that when we humble ourselves as this verse says he will exalt us so we don't have to worry about being disadvantaged because we're humbled um, there's a there's a blessing awaiting us as as we can see we don't know what his time is when it will happen but I think patience and humility is is definitely necessary in the believers life <coughs> so that's what I realized um, in scripture now let's move on to um, the greatest example of humility ever and um, it's a great inspiration to us all that our Savior was um, is the greatest example of all, of all time um, now let's let's have a look at his life and how how he showed humility in every in every um, circumstance 
even from, from his birth until his death, he was humble. And we read in Micah 5 verse 2 um, that he was born in Bethlehem, which was, according to scripture, but you Bethlehem, from Ephrates, you who are little among the clans of Judah, out of you shall come forth to me the one to become ruler in Israel. And his coming forth or his appearance are of old from everlasting. So there's no doubt that this verse refers to our Messiah. Um, and he was born in Bethlehem, which is a, which was a, or which is a very small town which was at no significance at all in, in, um, in the sense of having other kings, uh, kings being born there. And, and from all places, our father chose that, that specific town because of, because of its size and humility among the other clans. And then as, as time went on, Yeshua started teaching in the in the synagogues but he always referred back to his father's word as he's teaching and we read that in John 17 verse 7 verse 16 where he says um, Yeshua answered them and said my teaching is not mine but he's who sent me and he said that many times in the in the in John throughout the book where where he never took any credit for his, for his teachings. And that just shows us how humble he was, even, even conveying the truth to others. He never um, felt any pride doing that because he knew where he came from and he knew what, what his task on earth was. Um, he never seeked his own desire, um, where, whereas... In this world, we are taught to follow our dreams, seek our desires. In John 5, verse 30, we read, Of myself, I am unable to do any matter. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own desire, but the desire of the Father who sent me. So it's... it's <coughs> We read that, I just want to open another scripture uh, that, I, that reminded me of this, where we as believers are also called not to seek our own desire and not to judge, but in, in 2 Timothy 2 verse 25, we read that, if you, if you would like to turn to that scripture, 2 Timothy 25, um, where we are taught to, as servants, because we are all servants of the Master, as the servant of the Master, um, we should not quarrel, but we be gentle towards all, able to teach, patient when wronged, in meekness or humble, Instructing those who are in opposition, those who are not uh, with us, maybe in, in what we teach. Um, we, we are called in meekness, instructing those um, who are in opposition, lest somehow Elohim gives them repentance unto a thorough knowledge of the truth. So, in that, we give them a chance Give, to, to hear the truth, maybe somewhere else, but not forcing the truth on them, even if, if that's what we feel like doing at that stage. And that we see in, in our Savior's life as well. Now moving on to, to some more of this, we see that he was never pride, prideful, even, even when he was confronted with unclean people, <coughs> in those days, people were seen unclean if they had leprosy. Or um, there were many, many um, circumstances where people were unclean. And we read in Matthew verse, uh, 8 verse 2 that, he's, um, And see, a leper came 
and bowed before him, saying, Master, if you desire, you are able to make me clean. And not chasing the guy away like, like others would because of fear that it was, it was a contagious disease. Um, in verse 3 we read, And stretching out his hand, Yeshua touched him, saying, I desire it, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. So, he didn't, he, just, he didn't just say a word. He could have. But he felt like in that circumstance, or in that situation, he felt like touching this guy that never expected that. So, it's just a wonderful example to us that even people that are not of our social um, standard or maybe not of our skin color, you know, we, we should be humble in, in all circumstances, like our Savior was, um, in showing that he, he didn't judge that guy for, for what, he, what he looked like or who he was, but he showed compassion. Let us do the same. Now, later in his life, before his death, um, we see that he washed his disciples' feet in John 13, verse 3 to 5. Let's, let's read it. Um, verse 3, Yeshua, knowing that the Father had given all into his hands, and that he had come from Elohim and was going to Elohim, rose from supper and laid aside his garments. And having taken a towel, he girded himself. After that, he put water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the taught ones and to wipe them with a towel uh, which was, with which he was girded. Now, in verse 3, we, we notice that a very profound truth is that Yeshua, knowing that the Father had given all into his hands. So knowing his identity and um, because of his identity, he was able to do this humble deed to, towards his disciples, people under him, um, placed under him. It's, it, it was unheard of in that time. And, and the disciples, they accepted it. Some of them accepted it. Um, one didn't. And it's amazing how knowing his identity and us knowing our identity in him, that is, that is the actual reason why we are able to do this. So again, not out of ourselves. We are unable to be humble, as we've seen. We, gr we grow up in a society where it's frowned upon, whereas if we knew our identity, our true identity in, in him, in the Messiah, we would be able to, to follow his example and um, not be judged by others because of that. Not feel like we are missing out on life because we are humble. So, let's learn from that. And let's move on um, to the third slide. Whereas, instead of um, entering into Jerusalem before it was... Um, before he was basically killed, um, kings usually entered a town or a city on a horse, um, ready for battle, showing their, their pride and, and their uh, stature. Whereas he came into the Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And we read that in Zechariah 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your sovereign is coming to you. He is righteous and endowed with deliverance, humble and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So not even on a, on a grown donkey. He was on a foal. He was humble. He was, again, he knew his identity. He is righteous and endowed with deliverance. So out of that, he could, he could do this. He could come in on a donkey, humble, showing, showing his true identity and, um, 
as a lamb coming to be slain. And on that, on that topic, he died, not a, not a noble death, but instead of that, a cursed death on a tree. We read that in 1 Peter 2 verse 24. Who being reviled did not revile in return. Suffering did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously who himself bore our sins in his body on the timber, so that we, having died, having died to sins, might live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed, we were healed. So because of what he's done, and because of his humility, we are able to live. We are able to live lives pleasing to him. And lives... Not for ourselves, which is so hard, but, but He made it possible. He showed us in all of these examples that it's possible to be humble and yet to have an identity far greater than any identity we can, ma we can ga gain on this earth through whatever occupation or social status. And... Um, even though he was fully man, fully God, um, it feels like it's above us because, because we are only man. And, and then I found some examples in scripture of other men like us called to, called to action. And um, I've, I've selected two and I'd like to share them with you. And that is the example of Moses and Paul. We read in Numbers 12 verse 13. And, Mo and the man Moses was very humble. More than all men who were on the face of the earth. And I wondered why he was so humble. And then I, I read up about him and realized that he grew up, he grew up as, a, as, as a prince in the palace of the pharaoh of that, of that time. So he didn't have any reason to be humble. Even though it wasn't his own, own people, th that's all he knew. Because he was, he was taken as a child out of, the, out of the basket. And he grew up in the palace. He had everything to his disposal. But he knew that he, was, he, had a, he had a purpose and he knew that his purpose was far greater than just being royalty on earth. But that he, he, had, a, he had a mission and his mission was to, to lead um, Jehovah's people out of slavery as promised. So, so I reckon that, that the... <coughs> Later in his life, <clears throat> after the burning bush episode, he met face to face with Jehovah. And nobody else had that privilege without dying. So he, had, he knew his identity without a doubt. He knew where he stood. He was, he was humble because of that. <clears throat> and um, also we read about Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9. Where um, we read, For I am the least of the emissaries, who am not worthy to be called an emissary, because I persecuted the assembly of Elohim. But by the favor of Elohim, I am what I am, and his favor towards me was not in vain. But I labored much more than, all, than they all, yet not I, but the favor of Elohim in me. It's a wonderful example of humility where he realized that what he was doing was wrong and he turned from that. He turned 180 degrees and started walking in faith. He started building up the assembly by teaching the truth. In those days, um, truth 
truth was what the Pharisees taught. Because every Sabbath people went to the congregation. They heard what the, what the Pharisees taught on the pulpits. Um, their traditions, traditions of men. Whereas Paul came to teach the truth of the Messiah and the truth of Scripture, not tradition or any man-made rules or regulations. And that's why the opposition was so great. Um, he had many trials. He, has, he was in prison many times because of the truth. And yet he stayed humble. He, he didn't... Um, he didn't exalt himself because he knew the truth. And that is, that is a great example to us all. That even though we know the truth, we should be humble in explaining it. And um, in meekness, bring it across. And again, he knew his identity. He met Yeshua on the road to Damascus. Where he was busy doing what he thought was right. But it wasn't right. So, so he got a second chance and a, a meeting with the Most High and where he turned and um, did so much for the kingdom. Now, the next step is for us to, um, to act on the call, to be humble. And I compile the list um, I'll show you just now. That um, that will help us to to achieve humility. Again, not out of ourselves, as you will see. Um, it starts with starts with prayer, and and that is the base basis of our belief. We're a relationship, knowing who we are in Him, knowing our true identity, starts with this relationship and prayer. So, let's pray like Yeshua prayed to the Father um, and acknowledging the fact that we're not, we're not preaching our own words but the truth that, that has been revealed to us. Um, next step is to be obedient to what the Father tells us. So, in His, in His Word we can see what what we are called to. And in scripture we read everything we need to know. And um, we ask that in prayer we ask that the Spirit will lead us and in understanding what, what the scripture says. Then another thing that, that I realized throughout my studies is that living simply, even though it's so hard these days, it's, it's the only way to really accomplish humility. Because, as, as I said, society wants us to be up on, in, in palaces showing what we accomplished in this life. But if we live simply, we will be able to be humble. It will just be easier. So, I'm not saying everybody should, but it will make life easier. And, and being humble... And that brings us to the next point of being a servant. And um, as, as we saw in all those examples, they were all servants. They were all great men. Great above, above many of our abilities if we, if we go on our own abilities. But they stayed humbled because they knew they were under the Father, the Creator of everything. And... Um, Let's be servants of, of each other, like Yeshua showed us, to be servants of, of those around us, even though they are of lower status. Um, and build one another up, um, instead of breaking each other down. Sincerely apologize when we're wrong. Forgive others, forgive ourselves. Be content with what we have at this stage in our lives because we have so much more than we need and then be thankful for what, for what He's given us.
Thank you. Uh, let's, let's close in prayer. <coughs> Father, we come humbly before your throne. We acknowledge you as creator of heaven and earth. And thank you that you, you keep us throughout these times on earth. Times that are changing. May we hold fast to your example. Be humble. And above all, may your will be done. We pray this in your son's name. Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen.